Hello, and welcome to My Low Country Living. I'm Tommy Ray. Today, I wanted to discuss with you 10 tips to successfully start intermittent fasting. People like to use intermittent fasting to help lose weight, to lower their blood sugar levels, to lower blood pressure, and many other um, health-related issues. But not everybody knows how to intermittent fast, so I wanted to discuss with you real quickly 10 tips that I found to make intermittent fasting successful. I've been intermittent fasting for um, about seven weeks now, and during that course of time, I have lost um, 20 pounds in about 45 days. It's something I take on as a lifestyle that I wanna share with everybody else. So the number one thing that you wanna do when you start intermittent fasting is know your reason for starting intermittent fasting. So whether that is because you are overweight or you wanna lose some weight, or you think you want to use it to lower your blood sugar levels or to lower your blood pressure, lower your cholesterol levels, or even uh, use it to try to attempt to reverse type two diabetes. Know what that reason is and focus on that reason. Um, the number two thing you wanna do is do your research about intermittent fasting because like any, I'll call it diet plan or lifestyle change, you, you need to know exactly what goes into it and even consult your physician if necessary. Um, there are plenty of places you can get a lot of good research on intermittent fasting. Obviously, um, the internet has a lot of resources for you. Uh, YouTube, there are a great amount of videos on YouTube. Um, also, some great books and ebooks. I have found that Dr. Jason Fung is a great resource. Uh, you can go ahead and just Google Dr. Jason Fung or intermittent fasting, or even look it up on YouTube. He's got a whole lot of videos out there about intermittent fasting and how it helps lose weight. Um, and so, and how it can also help reverse type two diabetes. So he's a great resource. Also, um, his book is called, um, he has two books out there that are great to go ahead and read. One is The Obesity Code. The second book that's a great read from Jason Fung is, uh, the second book that's a great read from Dr. Fung is The Diabetes Code. And those, both those books are also available as eBooks. So you can go ahead and get them on um, Audible. I went ahead and purchased my, my books from Audible, um, and they're great, great listens. You can go ahead and um, listen to The Diabetes Code and The Obesity Code on Audible. Another great resource is a book by Jen Stevens called Delay, Don't Deny, in which she outlines for you in a little bit of a less of a scientific method, a little less scientific um, language, the uh, principles of intermittent fasting, as well as tells her story of how she got into intermittent fasting. Um, it's really great. Now, Jim is really popular in the intermittent fasting world. She um, has a, a, several blogs about intermittent fasting, several books about intermittent fasting. She hosts many multiple face group, groups, Facebook groups, and so she's a great resource. One of the podcasts that I like with Jen Stevens is one she does with Melanie Avalon, um, which they discuss intermittent fasting. Uh, Jen also has another great uh, podcast in which she um, this, uh, in which she discusses intermittent fasting stories from individuals who have gone through intermittent fasting and how it's changed their lives. And so those are both great podcasts to go and listen to as well. The third thing I would recommend is that um, before you start, go ahead and take pictures of yourselves and do all your measurements. So make sure that you measure yourself at your waist and you can measure your arms and your chest and, and, your, and your thighs. Um, you, want, you want to know where your starting point is because there'll be times in which, especially if you're trying to lose weight, in which the scale is not showing you a whole lot of significant movement, but maybe your clothes are fitting looser. And the way to tell is to go ahead and look at those, compare those measurements. Another thing, you, another thing is if you're diabetic and you want to um, uh, bring down your blood sugar levels, make sure you're going consistently taking your blood sugar level readings and recording those so that you can go back and see what that progress is. Um, Progress is important, and one way we know about what that progress is is to go back and, and look at our data that we have. So um, it's not always just the scale data. There's uh, the data in your measurements and in your uh, in your glucose readings and your A1Cs as well. So make sure you, you go ahead and do that right from the very beginning. Um, I know from my, myself, I didn't take a picture the very first week I started intermittent fasting. I took one a couple weeks later. Um, now I'm six weeks into it, and um, I wish I had one that was just from two weeks earlier. Luckily for me, um, I had been trying to lose weight for about nine months, and so I had a, 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 a starting point picture from July 2019 uh, of where I was at my, at my heaviest, which was 326 pounds. Um, right now, I'm coming in at uh, 276 pounds, so 50 pounds less right now. But it's really important that you do that so that you can um, see how that change occurs in, within yourself fourth thing that you can go ahead and do is select an IF cycle. There are a lot of different IF cycles and when you're beginning it's 
you want to try pick one that you think you can accomplish right off the bat that's going to be easier for you so a lot of beginners like to try the 16 and 8 cycle so that is 16 minutes of a lot of beginners like to try the 16 16 and a lot of beginners like to try the 16 and 8 cycle so that is 16 hours of fasting and 8 hours of eating sometimes you'll hear people call it 16 8 is uh, fasting and feasting or fasting and, fe and feeding but it's eating for eight hours of a day um, the next another popular cycle is 18 and 6 where you fast for 18 hours eat for six hours there's a 20 and 4 cycle which is the one that I like to do right now I did start off at 16 and 8 and I did that for um, about the first three weeks and then I did move to a, a 20 and 4 cycle which was really good for myself everyone's gonna be a little bit different uh, and then if you uh, want to go ahead and stretch that out there's one called OMAD which is one meal a day and typically people who do OMAD have about a 23 hour window in which they don't eat and their one meal is during that one hour window also there are um, cycles uh, there are also there's alternate day fasting cycles where you eat every other day and there's a whole host of other longer fasting cycles that you can go ahead and try as well but I do encourage you to do your research on all those cycles as well number five tell other people what you're doing it's really important that you go ahead and do this because um, you it's really important you go ahead and tell the people that you're doing intermittent fasting because you're gonna you're gonna have friends they're, they're, they want to know what why they see your body changing or why you're not eating with them all the time when you go out to breakfast or to a lunch if it's not your eating window um, so go ahead and tell people that you're doing this right off the bat it gives you some accountability and it also helps that uh, that they know when your eating cycles are so that they don't pressure you into trying to eat outside your cycle or they can be you know they can be considered of, of your eating cycles so I would go ahead and encourage you to do that I, so I'd encourage you to go ahead and make sure you tell other people as well. Number six, this one's really important, and that is to do a clean fast. Now, a clean fast is when, during your fasting period, you only partake in water, black coffee, or unflavored tea. It's really important you don't take drink in anything that's going to um, spike your insulin levels, and because once that insulin starts to produce, it takes you out of the ketosis state and you're not able to burn fat and if you're not burning fat then you're not losing weight as fast and so you want to go ahead and have a clean fast during that time period um, when you're not having it when you're, when, you're, when you're drinking other things that might that might stimulate your insulin level we call that a dirty fast so if you have a diet diet cola or you having um, something like crystal light that has artificial sweeteners in there um, it may have no calories but it does affect your insulin levels. Um, so studies have shown that uh, they, studies have shown that when a person um, has artificial sweetener, and they just uh, studies have shown that when artificial sweetener is given to individuals, that their insulin level go ahead and goes up just as if it was a regular sugar, just, just as if it was regular sugar. Some people ask, can I go ahead and put lemon or lime in my water, um, or can I have a, a, a tea made with apple cider vinegar? And that is a great area. A lot of people have discussions on that, and um, it's some people tell you yes, some people will tell you no. My advice is to go ahead and do the clean fast first for a good month, so that you know how your body reacts to a clean fast, and then you can try to integrate in the lemon and the lime and the apple cider vinegar to see how that affects your body. And if it makes you feel very hungry um, in a very short time after drinking those things, then you know it's causing a spike in your insulin levels and you probably want to refrain from that and go back to clean fasting. Uh, number seven is you want to create a support system through yourself. And as I mentioned earlier, um, there's some great uh, resources you can have if you go and join some Facebook groups. Uh, Jen Stevens has a group for uh, her book, Delay, Don't Deny. It's a great Facebook group to go ahead and join. Um, there's podcasts that you can go and listen to. I listen to Jen Stevens' podcast on intermittent fasting um, as well as your intermittent fasting stories and they are fantastic because it allows me to go ahead and listen to uh, sometimes two or three podcasts on my walks. I like to walk for about three to three and a half miles every, every evening and so it gives you a great mindset to go ahead and learn more about intermittent fasting as well as hear other people's stories of intermittent fasting, how it affected them, their ups and their downs and what they've learned through it and that really helps you in your journey with intermittent fasting as well. So I'd encourage you to create that uh, support system through these other types of groups or podcasts. Uh, number eight, 
is drink plenty of water. Um, a lot of times when you're intermittent fasting, you may not drink enough, um, and so your body will start to feel dehydrated. So you wanna make sure you get plenty of water. Water is also important because it'll help you feel full. There are times when you might be feeling hungry um, or, or your body thinks you're feeling hungry. And if you just drink a good glass of water, it'll help that hunger go away. Number nine you can do is start with a buddy. If you have a friend or family member that's looking to make a lifestyle change as well, do it together. It's really great to do it together because you can hold each other accountable and you can go ahead, go ahead and um, even compete against each other. When I started intermittent fasting, I started with my son. Um, he's 21 years old and he wanted to lose some weight and so um, we started the exact same day. Uh, he's just slightly ahead of me. He's lost 25 pounds in 45 days. I've lost 20 pounds. Um, but it's great to go ahead and talk to each other about um, our eating windows, how long we kept each window open, what we ate during our eating windows. So find someone that you can do this with, have a buddy, and that makes it a lot easier to go ahead and do. Number 10, persevere. Um, you're gonna find at times that you just don't see the results on the scale and it's gonna make you frustrated. Um, that's when you go back to those pictures that you've been taking all along this journey or look at the measurements you've been taking along the journey and you see the changes in, in your physique through looking at your pictures or you see the changes in your, in your measurement. You see that your waist is going down or that your arms are going down, your chest size is going down, your thigh size is going down or reducing. Those are the things that you need to go ahead and, and, and focus on when that weight doesn't seem to be happening, when, when the weight loss doesn't seem to be coming because your body is, is repairing itself during the intermittent fast. It takes a lot of energy for your body to go ahead and, and, and digest food. And so by intermittent fasting, we give the body a break from digesting food to let your body focus on things such as repairing itself. Um, when, you're, when, you fast, your body, uh, when you fast, your body also goes into autophagy. And that's when it actually goes and it cleans itself out. It goes and finds the old proteins within your body, within your body and it'll go ahead and use, use those proteins for fuel, break them down and use them for fuel and, 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 and get rid of the old proteins. And so that is great for your body to go ahead and, and have that. Um, but when it's doing that, you may not always see the weight loss because your body is focusing on healing itself and doing other things. So persevere. Don't be disappointed when the scale doesn't show you the numbers you want to see. Please persevere. Don't be afraid when the scale doesn't show you the numbers you want to see. I, a lot of people from uh, at the very beginning of intermittent fasting want, might even find themselves gaining up a couple of pounds because their body's adjusting to, from going from a period of time when um, perhaps they were on a starvation diet or diets that were restricting calories. Um, and so when they, when they do that and they're starting to eat again or they, have, or they limit their carbohydrates and starting to bring those back into the body, the body's adjusting. And so you may even gain a pound or two during the first week. But what I recommend is to go ahead and persevere, stick it out at least three weeks in that intermittent fasting diet. And you may need to make some tweaks to it. Maybe 16-8 is too large of a window for you and you find you're eating too much during your 16-8 window and you need to condense that window smaller down to a 18-6 or a 20 by four. Uh, for myself, when I first started, I found that in a in a 16-8 window, I wanted to have three meals a day and really pack in a lot of food and snacks, and um, my weight loss came really slow. My weight loss really started to to um, pick up when I did two things. I went ahead and moved to a 20 and four cycle, and I started clean fasting. Um, when I when I first started fasting, I was drinking my diet sodas, I was drinking flavored waters, and I was drinking Crystal Light. And those things were um, keeping my body from staying in a constant state of ketosis during my fast period. So when I started clean fasting along with the longer cycle of 20 by four, my weight loss really kicked into high gear. So those are the things that I would recommend, the 10 tips that will make you successful in intermittent fasting. Thanks for joining us. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And also please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.